welcome back, sure gamblers and hedge funders, to Northern Gaming Network's Tag Me videocast. We're talking today about uh, Up and Over. Up and Over. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm Matt. And basically we're going to do a little count up of what we thought about these cards. But first, uh, we just need a little bit of tea here. Let's just get some, some fluids. Fluids are very important. Oh, you almost got some fluids all over my fester. We're talking about the runner cards. This. Video. Oh yes, today we're going to talk about the runner cards, which is the best <coughs> part of that runner. Uh, runners, runners are awesome. Runners are where it's at. Running is the really the only interactive part of the game. It's named after the runners. Net it's runner. Net runner. You run the nets. So, yeah. Yeah. Corpse are terrible Corpse people. Corpse are evil. You all they want to do down? is burn your house. And murder your dogs. Steal your money, as we find out in this. this Kill earlier. you. So, our format is we rate the cards in our metagame on a scale of 1 to 7. Wait. 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 We should also say, before you finish watching this, or before, right now, stop. Go down and click the like button. Hit subscribe. Share it with all your friends so they can watch it at the same time. And that way you can all argue about how wrong we are about these cards. And that you've got better ideas than us. And also throw down some comments too. Uh, shout out to YouTube commenter Striatic for that awesome open that Alex gave us. Yes, thank that you for that. we only had to try three times. Yes, only, only threads. I it mean, was three times. That's as good as it gets with this one. Alright, so what we're doing today. We're counting up our cards yes, from, from the worst to best. And from... Matt's going to kick us off. Right, I'm going to start us off with Fester. Fester is an Anarch resource. It costs one, and it has the text, whenever the corp purges virus counters, they lose two credits if able. And it costs one influence that isn't ever going to get used anyway. I'm gonna read the flavor text from the bird lady. Yes. Uh, you should have known better than to scratch it. <clears throat> what are your initial impressions about Fester? Uh, I think this is a pretty terrible card. <clears throat> You would, this is probably sort of a casual play metagame card, but at the same time, that's a card slot that's you got to get rid of some other cards for. That's the big issue, is the noise decks that are getting run right now are pretty <clears throat> tight in card selection. Like, I yep. think I might even be running 46 right now. Yep. Uh, but you only really have room for one or two supplementary cards for your viruses. Uh, things like Deja Vu or Surge. Surge! Yep. And those cards do a lot more than Fester, which is really sometimes good if the Corp does a thing you don't really want them to do anyway. Fester gets a whopping one from me. Uh, I think it got a one from me as well. I it remember, that's out of seven. Yes, and it got a 2.2 total, which is the same as the next card, which is in fact... A unique this is, resource. This is what I'm doing with Fester. They can fester on my floor. How about you tell us about Angel Arena, Alex? Angel Arena is an awesome place to go. Watch a little rollerball. That's what's going on here in Angel Arena. It's time to play! Rollerball. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Watch rollerball. That's, that'll give you more pleasure than playing this card. Uh... Let me tell you about it, actually. It is a unique Angel Arena. There's only one on the moon. Having a good time. Cost X. It's a resource location. Place X power counters on Angel Arena when it's installed. When there are no power counters left on Angel Arena, trash it. One hosted power counter. Reveal the top card of your stack. You may add the card to the bottom of your stack. The only combo that people are going to think of right away that's pretty obvious is Oracle May. This replaces uh, motivation. motivation, thank you. Card that I never use because I don't bother with that combo. Um, so this replaces motivation for zero influence instead of spending the influence out of faction. Um, that being said, there's I put I gave this a three. I'm never gonna use this card, but I feel like there is some reason that this could actually work in some universe that isn't sure. that combo that people are talking about. So, I don't. Why don't you tell me what you thought of this? Uh, I, I think it's got a cool graphic on it because I just like sports. So, sport, sports. I gave this card a one out of seven because I feel as though this card is never going to be worth 
the slot in your deck. So anyways, I am not sure why this card is good, uh, why it was printed, but I feel like there should be an excuse for having an X plus X, X, X card in this pack. So somebody figure out a combination where this card could possibly be good, so my three actually makes sense. Thank you. The third card in this pack is in our ratings at least, which is the sixth best card <clears throat> on the runner side. Yes. Is Auto Scripter. Yes. Which is somewhat controversial. Yep. Auto Scripter is a criminal piece of hardware that costs three credits. It has the text, the first time you install a program each turn, gain a click. Trash Auto Scripter if you make an unsuccessful run. And it costs <clears throat> three influence, <throat> which is an enormous amount of influence mm -hmm. right now. So very unlikely to see this out of faction. <clears throat> Straight away, this is going to be an Ian card. That's easy. Because he's somebody who's not going to be running a whole lot. <coughs> okay, he but he's him. also not going to be installing a lot of programs. I see this card fringe if noise decks move away from the cash shop. Or get a 17 influence runner. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking specifically noise, however. Oh, okay. Specifically noise, because noise tends to install at least a program a turn. It'll install a virus, it'll click through Jin to find a parasite or a data sucker or something of that nature, and then it'll install it. And this gives you, this could give you seven to eight clicks over the course of a game. I think that if you can find it early enough and want to play enough programs, Autoscriptor will be playable and good. Until that point, it's completely unplayable. How about you tell us about the fifth card, fifth best runner card in this pack? All right. This next one is cool, and that's only because I really like origami. Both the card and the paper folding art. And I actually think that this is probably the best art in this pack. Let me tell you about uh, origami. Code or Swans. Origami is a zero cost, one MU program, no subtype. Your maximum hand size is increased by one for each copy of origami installed. Uh, this program is really cool, in my opinion, just because of the kind of style. It's talking about uh, paper folding, data folding, which is uh, pretty neat. If you, if you look at basically the folding piece of paper, you fold it so many times, it kind of gets layers and layers and layers. Same idea. So that increased by one for each copy of origami installed. That's a text on each one of these cards. So you get two installed. That's going to say increased by one twice on each of these cards. So you get increased by two, increased by two, that's a total of four. Yes. You get all three of those installed, that's a total of nine. That's right, because of the Hand exponential size. aspect. I feel as though you need to draw your second copy of Origami for this to be better sometimes than Public Sympathy. Public Sympathy is two. Yes. So <coughs> your second copy of Origami is twice as effective as your first copy of Public Sympathy. It's the same as a second copy of Public Sympathy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, you need either a console or a demon to host your origami. Yes, that is true because you're not really going to spend all that MU for hand size. Duggars. I think it's worth it just for Duggars. I would find, I would just have some mad card draw. Uh, My issue is that there's already a card not being played. Yes. That is use. more efficient than the first two copies of this. Or as first, efficient. Yeah, as efficient as, as the first, first two copy. copies. Not first two, because you get four you, that double. Second two, oh, right. two oh, yeah, copies of right. yeah, the same, same number. Two each. Yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yep, it's so, so it's already not being played, except as like fringe metagame tech against Wayland. Yes. So if a Duggar's mass install deck comes out of the woodwork, Origami might be played because it's free, a program, so it synergizes well with those effects. Yep. So we're in the top half of the runner side of this data pack. Okay, top High half. five, halfway. Halfway through. We're on a Switchblade. Switchblade is a three cost, one mm -hmm. MU, criminal program, icebreaker, killer. It costs two influence to splash, and it has two paid activated abilities. One credit, 
break any number of sentry subroutines. Use this ability only by spending a credit from a stealth card. One credit plus seven strength. Use this ability only by spending a credit from a stealth card. And it has a base strength of zero. Small, compact, easy to slip by monitoring programs, and it can do some damage. I think that, yes, we're getting to the point where there's a critical mass of stealth enablers and stealth utilizers. Where probably Chaos Theory, mm -hmm. just because of the uh, extra MU to, you know, play your cloaks. It provides you with really efficient credit uh, compartmentalization. I mean, you don't get to use your credit pool as efficiently, but you can invest your credits and clicks in super efficient breakers. Yes. So now you have a full suite of better than average stealth breakers. I think that it's going to enable that sort of build to come up in the future, especially alongside probably our number one card in this pack. Yeah, I'd say right alongside the number one card in this yeah. pack, I would say. I think a lot of people are excited about that card, so good luck, have fun, and uh, show us your stealth decks. Throw in some comment down below. Yeah, definitely. What you, uh, you want to make for your stealth decks. I'm going to take, uh, take the next one. This is number three. Our, we're into the <coughs> top three now. Welcome to third place. This is the bronze card of the pack. So without further ado, I'll talk about trade-in. Uh, this is a one-cost event. As an additional cost to play this event, trash an installed piece of hardware. Gain credits equal to half the install cost of the trash hardware. Round down. And search your stack for a piece of hardware. Reveal it. Add it to your grip. Shuffle your stack. So, <clears throat> like I said, this is a card that people have been waiting for. Uh, we haven't had a hardware tutor before. Now we do. So say you get a, you draw an extra console, like uh, one we're going to talk about shortly. Sure. Um, spoiler alert. And you can you have one installed, but it rounds down in terms of the amount. So you're basically spending one, spending two because you're going to trash one, spending another one, three. But then you can pull up another piece of hardware that might be effective, say Flash Creep or anything. Mm -hmm. So, I think, tr I think trading will see some play. I don't think it's going to go everywhere, but I think it's going to see a fair amount of play and because people have been looking for a hardware tutor, it rounds out the board for, for that. I think that's the main buy for trading, yeah. is that it fills a hole that hasn't otherwise had any sort of pieces so far. When you build for hardware, you've been pretty much out of luck. I don't think this card is necessarily going to be played very much. Okay. In, Why is that? Uh, because it requires you to already have hardware you don't want. Okay. Uh, also, it is not very efficient. It costs you credits to lose clicks you previously spent in order to enable you to spend more credits and clicks later. Now I can see what you're saying there. Um, hardware, generally speaking, is more powerful than programs or resources, kind of in its one, if it's, let's say, things like consoles, like plus memory. Uh, That's true. You know? That's and, why it's harder to find. Right. So, right. generally speaking, it's harder to find. So, you need to have that kind of cost reward. I do really like the idea, moving forward, of hardware you can use up. Yeah. Hardware that is effective in the early game, mm -hmm. less effective in the late game. I really like that, too. Um, in order to find your late game hardware. So, my personal favorite card in this pack. Yes, bring us into number two. We have uh, Inject, which is an Anarch event, costs one. Reveal the top four cards of your stack. Trash all programs revealed. Gain one credit for each program trashed. Add the rest of the revealed cards to your grip. This costs two influence out of faction. I've been using this most recently in my noise cash shop deck. And I've found that it is always win-win. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives that Jinteki uh, feel to Anarch where they're showing off what they've got. Yeah. And it's kind of a mind game a little bit. Right, yeah, that of Anarch, That anarchy of just willy-nilly, I don't care what you think, I don't give a shit what you know. Yeah. I'm going to fuck your shit up either way. Absolutely, so, I agree. There are an infinite number of ways of using Inject in your deck. You can play Retrieval Runs. You can play so 
deja vus with parasites and yep. data suckers and caches. Yep. I think that this is the most exciting card for me in this pack from either side, honestly. Because the best cards in the pack, mm. you know, reverse the counts on the corpse side, and then we're about to talk about the best runner card. They're just efficient cards. Yeah. They're just really good at the single-minded thing they do. But what Inject does is it opens up these whole different branches of play to Anarchs yeah. and maybe other factions that really, they excite me. It excites me a lot more than I couldn't tell. just good cards. So I really think that Inject will revitalize the Anarch faction. And that's more important to me than just being really good. Yep. <coughs> yeah. It's awesome. Have fun with it. Tell us all your stories. Okay, so I'm going to give you a drum roll, and then you're going to announce what the top card of the pack is. It is Astrolabe. This is the yeah. newest, the latest and greatest console for Shapers. The console-heavy faction. Every, no, really. There's really only like a couple of consoles they ever run. Desperado before this <laughs> yeah. is the best Des shaper Desperado console. Desperado is the best shaper console. <laughs> Let's tell you what Astrolabe is because we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. It is a one cost piece of hardware type console. Unique, of course. Plus one memory. Pretty straightforward for console. Usually has some memory. Draw one card whenever the corp creates a server. So right there, that is direct NEH counter. Every time they create a server, they're drawing a card, and so are you. Not S just NEH, though. But it's not just NEH. Yes, you're right, absolutely. So Astrolabe is also going to be basically any horizontal play deck. That's the thing, is horizontal play is P so happy right now. RP. RP. NEH. Um, Blue Sun, Blue arguably. Sun could be, yeah, depending on the person. So that is a lot of card draw that is generally free for the runner one cost. Uh, it is two influence. I will mention that. Um, I guess I have been a little neglectful telling what the influence in the cards were. Most of your cards aren't splashable. <clears throat> but I think, uh, yeah, the ones I talked about either weren't splashable or you weren't going to splash them anyways. Yeah. Um, I like this pack because I think the runners won this pack overall. Um, in my opinion, okay. the runners won the pack overall, but I think that the whole pack is probably the best pack we have seen in two cycles in terms of since genesis cycle since genesis i, I think for the most number of cards you might that you're probably going to use sooner rather so than tough because i don't that's really close i don't really even know what cards are in what each cycle, cycle yeah. i just have all my cards separated <laughs> by faction yeah and i'm like oh i pulled this card out what faction say, is this it's from? been a while <laughs> since i've been excited for more than two cards yeah. that's fair two okay. or three cards in a pack one of our uh, metagame players described this pack as being fundamental. Um, one of those packs that you kind of need in order to be able to compete. I don't necessarily agree it's fundamental, but it's such a good pack. I don't yeah. think it's great. No one card in this pack is going to change the yeah. way the game is played. Absolutely. But so many cards in this pack are going to be played then it's going to change metagames. Yeah, it's going to change metagames, and it's going to change maybe the way you specifically play Could. your style. Or I think it just really augments everything. Augments really all the nicely. different play styles, absolutely. Yep. Sounds good. All right, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you watching Northern Gaming Network's Tag Me videocast. Um, I'm Alex. I'm Matt. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Share, and just send it out to all your friends. Discuss. Throw some comments down below. Tell us what you like and didn't like. And remember, stay frosty, runners. Five, four, three. And welcome back, sure gamblers and hedge funders, to Northern Gaming Network's Netrunner Talk. Tag me. I'm going to cut that in. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Let's try it again. Beep! Uh, um, Five. Four, three, and welcome back to NGN's Tag Me video talk on Netrunner. I'm Alex. You left out the. I left out the very important part. <laughs>
the part that we uh, got from the YouTube guy. <laughs> sure, gamblers. The one and thing I just that think. proves we have a viewer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut that whole stuff out. Okay, five. Okay, five, four. I'm not gonna be home by ten. Five, oh, God, four, no. three. That's this lovely card here. Fester is an anarch resource. <laughs> this is where you. It's gonna like put you the don't card. even know how I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, exactly. The card's already right here, boss. Hmm. But that means I'm just. It looks like I'm holding a giant. It looks card like you're right holding now. a giant. That's adorable. Neat little flavor, to the point where I'd actually like another one of these cards to fold it into a paper crane. So if someone wants to fold me a paper crane copy of this card and mail it to me, that would be awesome. <coughs> I would frame it. I guess I can't frame a three-dimensional object. You one of those little flash cases. It, no, you need one you, of those little oh, boxes. Oh, paper crane in a bottle? Yeah, paper crane in a bottle. If someone can take this card and fold it into a paper crane and put it in like a, a little bottle or a box so that I can see it, it's protected and pretty, um, you'll win a prize. I, I don't really know what though. He'll. I'll figure it out. Reimburse you for your chapter for your data pack. Yeah, actually, that might be. A, yeah. Data. Yeah. Or something cooler than that, because that seems really too simple. Dick pics.